what the other guy is doing through WhatsApp and through Facebook. Yes, Mark. Nobody knew this man before. In short span of time, he's expanded like virus to the whole world. And if you're not on Facebook, that means your virtual entity is. Can I hear it again? Zero. Zero. And you want to become hero, right? <laughs> so you have. I think I'm not speaking right, maybe. <laughs> so the lights are not supportive to me. But still, like an ordinary businessman, I'll still fight for my uh, cause. I don't know how many minutes are given to me. Uh, so 10 minutes, probably. I can speak on this. Yeah. Thank you. Well, no. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> sir, seven, every 15 days I'm when I'm really tired with all government regulations, with ESI, with every act, I actually book my lecture. Thank you for providing me one. <laughs> so my stress is gone after this lecture, that I ensure. I don't know how many of you will end up being at stress when I talk to you. That's a separate story. Now what does you all have heard of Dale Carnegie, of course. How to win and friends and influence people was one book before Shiv Keda preached himself to be the final philosopher of life. <coughs> Dale has uh, referred at one point of time, he talks about stop loss principle. Now, what is this stop loss principle? Any of us who is into share market, please? Option trading or anything like that? No. Thank God. <laughs> you will end up remaining 2 crore patis. I mean, 2, two crore pati is like 2 crores you started with and you will be intact. Now, what is the stop loss principle? It simply says that if you bought a share at 50 rupees and you put a stop loss at 45, you have bought that share of 10,000 at 50 rupees and if you have put a stop loss of 45 rupees onto that uh, uh, person, uh, onto that India Infoline or whatever site you, have, you are trading with, that company will automatically sell off your shares at 45 rupees. That means you have just booked the loss of how much? Correct. All of us are commerce students here. So I believe that nowadays business is also run like this. You know why? Because it is changing times and changing measures. You end up doing a lot of things simultaneously. That means a businessman is now entered into a hospital. Same way he is doing a hotel. That means somebody who is doing the architecture work for hospital, for the same businessman, he is doing it for hotel industry, which is two different service sector industries, altogether different. But still that businessman is managing the show through his entire teamwork or whatever management skills. I tell you to have the best of the ways to earn money is that you take up any startup, you brand it well and you value it well. That means business nowadays are run through valuations. Can anybody explain me what is the meaning of valuations here? I said business is not run by the profits. I say it is run by the valuations. That means you talk about valuations of the book. That means if I really want to have the investor investing in me, because see, I started with a limited cap capital, maybe just two lakh rupees, sir, and I know a business which can give me 200 crores or 20 crores after 6 months or 1 year from now. And then what I do? You tell me what I'll do. Should I wait for 20 years to grow into arithmetic progression or geometric progression? Those who are into service, they go into arithmetic progression. That means, when you're doing service for me, I pay you like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, despite of my profit, sir. Because I took the risk and I'm the entrepreneur. So, higher the risk? You know it so well. I think any of you can also join us here on the days, please. So you know the principle very well. So as a businessman, I took the risk. So I am paying you in arithmetic fashion because we are all assuming to be the employees. Now I change this course of action. I ask you to run in geometric progression. How you are going to do it? In business, if you make earnings, it is always geometric progression. 4, 16, 64. That's how you're going to grow your business. And then it is always happening. If you don't have money in your pocket, my dear friend, find somebody 
who is having a heavier pocket than you. Can you do me this favor? Yes, sir. That means you have to find an investor who can invest into your company that is a startup company. Anyone, anyone, if you are into creative things, maybe you want to market paintings very well, you have to find an investor in you who can trust on your abilities, res responsibilities and execution of the job. And believe me, my dear friend, your friend will not just see this, but an investor will see your book value. That means how fast you are growing. You started with 1 crore in the year 2014. 2015, you are 2 crores, just double. And 2016, you are 5 crores or 10 crores. I bet you, you share your presentation with any of the good investors and you are through. That's what JV is done. That's how JVs are done these days, joint ventures. That means you will pro promote him as a shareholder of your company. He'll come into your company as an outsider. You are the main worker. He's the silent partner. He's investing money into your company and that's how you're going to grow. Now, you must have all heard of Sanskrit principle. Yada yada hi dharmasya glane bharti bharat abhyutthanam dharmasya tadamanam sujameham. Now what does that mean? जब जब धर्म की हानि होती है कोई अवतार लेता है और यहां पे जो अवतार है वो कम भी जैन है सो एज लॉन्ग एज द रेगुलेटरी बॉडीज फाइंडिंग डिस्प्यूट्स द काइंड ऑफ केसेस एंड्रोन सत्यम सर हैज शेयर्ड ऑल द बिग फ्रॉड्स ऑफ द कंपनी वेयर दे हैव ल्यूड द पब्लिक दे हैव स्पेकुलेटेड इट इज जस्ट लाइक एंटरिंग इनटू अ शोरूम on the basis of seeing the statue outside that the statue looks beautiful so the showroom will also be beautiful that's in business we call window and we say window dressing you know it well that's window dressing so you dress your accounts very well and sir has rightly said auditors will protect you because they are busy in their remuneration sir they will not put any Disclosures, because when they'll come up with a disclosure, you will say, "Sir, what was your remuneration last time? Five percent increase. What do you say, sir? And a trip to Europe, seven days with your family, and then auditor is happy. And then suddenly you enter into a trap, a trap of fooling government around. And for long you cannot do it. So the government has rightly come up with the act, looking for a change, and. I will rightly say this here that when you take up this window dressing in your books of accounts, in your valuations, you can grow from a private limited company to a public limited company. And that's what a businessman should ideally do. To project himself big, he should or she should invest time into finding new investors so that that's how they are going to grow in the global world. You agree with me this on this? Now, Another principle that I like to share because it is accounting and being the past chairman, I like to share one more principle which says there was a wealthy man and he earned a lot of money in life. He used to come on time also to the office, but unke paas ek locker tha, jahan pe usne ek piece of paper rakh rakha tha. He was maintaining peace with himself, with the world, with the family, with the society with contributions and everything he was doing. He was earning, he was contributing back to the society. Usse poochha gaya, wo roj jab aada tha, to bhagwan ko pray nahi karta tha, us tijori mein rakhe ve kagaj ko nikalta tha, dekhta tha, padhta tha, aur wapis usko rakhe ta tha. Usi tijori mein. And all the articles, those who were the trainees there, all the employees, they finally wanted to know ki yaar, wo aisa kya karte hai, humare boss, ki roj aate hai, us kagaj ko padhte hai, aur shaam ko bhi padhte hai, subhe bhi padhte hai. Finally, when it was a birthday, it was a wish that you had to ask him what you wanted to give to him. So, that person said, Sir, tell me that you want to know this principle. I've been working for 8 years here. And I didn't know what you wrote in that package. And that package was written in the simple principle. Debit is equal to credit in life. What we give, what we sow, is what we get. So, rightly said with the Corporate Governance and Companies Act, if the companies doesn't have the intention to become defaulters, the government will provide enough savior to save their lives. 
because the law is based prematurely or predominantly, predominantly on the basis of simple principle that principle is called as principle of natural justice it's simple opportunity of being heard that means if, if a businessman doesn't have a malafide intention to earn money and make money in life this company's act will definitely give you sir uh, enough protection and I like to leave here by simply saying that <coughs> any of you here can become a guru bhai in life I don't know how many of you know Reliance for right reasons or for wrong reasons and how many of you know Tata for right reasons and wrong reasons Tata is one man who is becoming big in life and still helping other businessmen to grow he is continuously investing in startup companies sir all the big companies which are coming up like Car Dekho, the recent example he has got an investor from Tata that means that man has become big in life and now he wants to help others with his piece of cake I think any business should be run with this principle with the principle of sharing social causes also because then you will get peace with yourself not just having and multiplying money with 100 crores to 10,000 crores which other business houses are doing but not taking up the social responsibility in the right sense and before I leave there was a blind man who was sitting on the road but was not getting money because he has written there sir I am blind please help me with money and nobody give the money that day the other day the journalist was there she took that piece of paper and changed she wrote this is a beautiful day you can see but I cannot and that day his goal was filled with a lot of money so that's how we look at things in life we should predominantly look at positive aspects of every act and being a speaker I say sir this act has all the positives and the negatives it's on us to decide the right interpretation and right execution thank you so much have a pleasure We have uh, heard the two speakers, hmm? Professor Mathur and Mr. Jain is there. And uh, Professor Mathur rightly uh, stated that why, why the corporate governance question arises? One of the basic reason is that it is estimated that 2020, our economy, our three countries, they are going, their GDP is going to be, going to be much higher than US, European countries and US. And in big countries, the major contributors are, say, China, Russia, and India. If these economies, they are going to grow in such a manner, that means we must integrate our economy with the world economy. That is one reason why we integrate it. Second issue, the matter is that world has become a flat. The reason being flat, you can buy the raw material where it is available at a cheapest rate and convert into a fresh goods where labor is the cheapest. <coughs> and market the product where you can get the best price for that. So in this way, we have got a lot of opportunities are available to us. Next issue is raised that whether the shareholders are from the stakeholders, corporate governance, it should be viewed. That means certainly, stakeholder is much wider term. Because in this case, fair, fair access to the government. Because government is providing you such a huge infrastructure, this corporate world is not providing this infrastructure. When government is providing, that means you must share some income or adequate income with the government so that the government can provide you some additional infrastructure available to you. So the next one is the stakeholder, that is the shareholders. The next party is the employees or the management or the consumers or the financial institutions or by the creditors of the company. That means every interest should be protected. Only then we can survive in the market. Next issue is raised that uh, if we want to find out what is the exact NPA, because yesterday there was a news in the uh, uh, Doordarshan that uh, uh, the NPA is increasing during the, the, this government regime, it is only because they were following, following uh, false practices, accounting practices during the previous regime. 
and we try to disclose all the NPAs under the new practices. And that's why there is a sudden jump in the NPA. And now CBI is asked that all those NPAs where it is more than 500 crore rupees, please supply us the list to the Supreme Court. What's, what action the government is going to take? That is, uh, as Mr. Jain said, it can be a question that by framing so many laws, who framed these laws? Brain. The second brain is breaking those laws. That means one brain is creating. Now who is going to overweigh that? Specific question of that. And next is the like in the in the companies say are in the SEBI, are in the corporate law board. Even if you bring certain rules and regulation, you will find every case of market practices it is different nature. If you compare the case of Satyam, are with the case of Pearl Grove, where the embezzlement to the tune of forty thousand crore rupees. And in the case of uh, the Sahara Group, and you can take the very long list on the website if you download what are the top embezzlement are, are this uh, corporate frauds in USA or UK or India, you will find very long list is available to us. And each fraud is from the different group. Do you think how many laws we can create just to plug every code? It again becomes a question mark. Because the nature of Malpreet, it is entirely different in each case. Like in the case of Pearl Grove, he said in Mali, he acquired about 3,000 uh, 3, acres of land to establish a township. And uh, he was uh, having a good blessing of Aminder Singh. As the government changes, they immediately cancel the old deal. That means whatever money is paid to the farmer for acquiring the land, it is now waste. If there is a political second party wins, that means this is a very good project. Now it is a question of political, by chance what happens in that situation. And uh, the next issue was raised, that is the shortcoming in accounting and reporting. Similarly in the case of uh, auditors' failures, take the case of in Satyam. Who was the auditors? Again MNC company. And those MNC companies said he is an excellent reporting and they provided the international award to the Satya for this purpose. That means auditors are also not uh, doing the fair deal. They are not because they are getting the pay from the company. If, if they are getting a, uh, this revolution from the company, how they can write against them? And in accounting, in CA, very good term is there in the end, to the best of my knowledge. All the accounting records, they are best to the my knowledge. So in this way, these issues are discussed in this way. I think some further issues will come up in the deliberations in the next papers. Now, firstly, I call this uh, Akansha Kurana from research scholar from Department of EAFM, University of Rajasthan. A very warm welcome to one and all present here. Uh, myself, Akansha Khanna, and my co-presenter Asa are going to present, or rather I, sh rather I should say that we are going to initiate a discussion on Section 135 of Companies Act 2013, its issues and prospects. Section, uh, just for general information, Section 135 made CSR, that is Corporate Social Responsibility mandatory in companies of India. Uh, well, directly jumping to issue, before jumping to issues and prospects, let us have a brief idea about what is corporate social responsibility. It is an evolving concept which is gaining importance and corporate is taking it as a good business opportunity. It is generally understood to be the way a company achieves a balance or, balance or integration of economic economic, environmental, or social imperative. That is the three paradigms together. Economic, social, and environmental together. Uh, CSR policy of the business ensure that company is compliant with law, ethical standards, national or international norms. Too much in one simple word. Ethical, law, environment, society, everything comes under corporate social responsibility. 
Section 135 of the Companies Act has mandated, mandated corporate social responsibility resulting in standardizing the meaning of CSR in context of India and creation of uniformity and accountability of action. Section 135 majorly states that company having a net profit of 5 crore or more, net worth of 500 crore or more, or turnover of 5000 crore or more in any financial year, companies has to spend 2% of average net profit made during the uh, during made uh, in three immediately preceding financial year uh, in CSR activities. That CSR activities are st uh, stated in Schedule 7 of Companies Act. Thus, India became the first country to take the move by clarifying how much to spend, who has to spend, and where a company can spend for CSR activities. Prospects related to Section 135 is, first and foremost is, CSR now is not voluntary, it is a mandatory. It is a mandatory requirement. Like earlier, those companies which do not fall in the ambit do not necessarily have to make a CSR had to, uh, to invest in a CSR activity, but now they have to mandatorily invest in CSR activities. Next is the uh, next two points are interrelated. As we all are business students, so we all know that uh, when a company invests in social projects or in corporate social responsibilities, there is a better image or there is a long-term sustainable development. Thus, it helps in building reputation, goodwill, competitive advantage and competitive edge for the company. Next is opportunity for the company to, this is a great, great, great opportunity for a company to showcase their effort towards development of society and environment. Next point is uniformity among co uh, corporate. Uniformity in context of how much a company has to spend, that means the quantum. And the second is avenues, where a company can spend. It is already been stated in section 135. Next is access to new market and customer. As schedule 7 states, uh, I think 10 activities in which a company can uh, spend in CSR activities. These are the new avenues in which a company can contribute. Uh, new markets and new customers. Next is effective strategic decision making. As experts in CSR committee made under provision will take care of the uh, CSR decision making. Issues related to section 135 is Although CSR is become uh, is mandatory now, but there is no precise definition. What is CSR? It, it has not been stated. It is just has been stated that if you have that net, that much net profit, net worth, or net earning, you are going, you have to invest in CSR activity. There is no precise definition. What is CSR? Next is there is no guidance regarding what should fulfill the criteria of value explanation in case you do not comply with the section. Next is what defines local area. The provision states that you have to invest in CSR activity in the local areas. Uh, there is no definition of local area, whether it is a regional office in which your company have a, has a registered office or it is an operational area where, where you actually operate, where the business have operated, business <coughs> operations are done. Next is, uh, the activities apart from mentioned in Schedule 7 are considered as CSR activities or not. Uh, there are many activities apart from the uh, uh, activities mentioned in Schedule 7. There is no regard to the, this context of whether these are considered to be CSR activities or not. Many of the uh, scholars feel that by mandating law, uh, by mandating CSR in law, CSR may lose its sanctity as uh, it has projected distorted image of corporate governance. Uh, next is, it promotes that CSR activities should be done by companies by establishing their own trust rather than partnering with local development organizations who are well versed with the local areas. Last but not least is, that provision does not consider contribution in political party as CSR activity but it is silent about the institution or offices being controlled and held by them. Now, I would like to welcome my co-presenter Asta Sharma to state the suggestions and conclusions to use from the study. Thank you so much. We recommend following suggestions as suggested by standing committee government should set up a monitoring authority to which the companies can report about their CSR activities. Companies should also disclose the achievements against the planned objective as well as apportionment of the funds among different agencies in their report. Ministry of Law and Justice should amend and provide the clear and broader definition of CSR and tax deduction to the companies for the CSR expenditure being incurred by them. Ministry of Corporate Affairs can mandate some 
some amount of funds to be spent on backward bed, area and can also fix the percent of CSR funds to be spent on project of socio-economic change. The funds set up by the government either by state or centre like PM relief funds etc. should be excluded or the amount to be spent on them can be limited. MCA can also mandate that all companies develop specific ethical business practice and corporate governance guidelines. CSR funds should be partnered with the local development organizations and NGO rather than the trust or agencies created by companies themselves. List of Schedule 7 should provide more activities in which the need of CSR is required. It can be concluded from the study that uh, Introduction of mandatory CSR provision can help India to meet its social and sustainable development goals. CSR plays a vital part in business strategic planning and to make companies socially responsible citizens. There are various issues and challenges associated with the CSR, um, but it should be considered as an opportunity to make a positive impact on community and society as a whole. The Act promises to majorly raise the bar on corporate social responsibility and corporate governance and alter the framework in positive sense. Thank you. Uh, Akansha uh, Khurana and uh, Arshita Sharma, so you presented uh, this discussion on section 130, uh, 135 that is about the corporate social responsibility. See, in the case of corporate social responsibility, percentage is fixed. But what are the activities? Probably it is laid down. But only big question mark is, you spend X rupees in accounting, it is reported something else. In this way, there are so many things they are happening. So try to take into consideration that factor also. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next paper is by Renika Sharma, research scholar, MTS University, Ajmer. stand here only that's okay so I'm just going to conclude uh, before conclusion I'd just like to say one thing that there was this heart surgeon and there was a mechanic that heart surgeon used to go to mechanics place every day for repairs of his car now one day that mechanic made a mockery of that heart surgeon that look you earn rupees 10 lakhs for a heart being operated and I do a tougher job than this you don't even know which part of your machine is not working and you come to me every day and I seriously feel sorry about myself okay, why this God has given this difference that heart sudden simply smiled back to him and said try this with the machine open and working condition because usually the machines are operated when it is closed down it's not in the start mode and when you operate a heart, the whole body is functioning. So he got his answer back. That's, that means the present world is, is the world of specialization. And since it is a company's act, I tell you, there's an immense opportunity in job sector also. And if you specialize in just one act, in company's act, for a simple hearing of a case in company law tribunal, by big companies, you can be paid up to a sum of rupees 5 lakhs for just half an hour of hearing, sir. So I request all of you here should master this act because you are students, you can read a lot and you can take this knowledge back to your work. Give your employer a reason to smile and he'll give you thousand reasons to smile back. Thank you all for this uh, hearing me patiently. Thank you. Very good afternoon to all of you. The title of the research paper is 
a study on the relationship between sustainable development and corporate social responsibility roadmap for the 21st century. As we all know that human beings can't live in isolation. Same with the case with companies. Uh, if companies are using uh, society as an as a input, as a resource, so there is immense responsibility and accountability for the companies also to give back uh, immense uh, benefits to the society as well. So the term corporate social responsibility simply means when companies are using society's inputs in a judicial manner, so they can give uh, benefit, Im immense benefit to the environment as well. When corporate social responsibility clubbed with the sustainable development, the word sustainable development means that uh, which meets the needs of the present without com compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. There are three pillars of sustainability uh, which are people, planet and profit. According to me, the second pillar that is planet is the most important. Um, the third one is a relationship between corporate social responsibility and sustainable development. In one line it can be said that it is a trade-off between economic profit and economic growth. It, uh, it, is, it is a positive approach, a balanced approach which uses economic progress social progress and environmental stewardship. That is, if companies are, may, are gaining long-term profits by looking the aspects of society and environment, it's corporate social responsibility club with sustainable development. Uh, today, there is a growing perception among uh, enterprises that sustainable business success and shareholders' worth cannot be achieved solely through short-term profits, throughout maximizing short-term profits, but through responsible behavior. Companies can increase the financial performance by ensuring environmental protection and promoting social responsibilities. There are three uh, initiatives uh, which, can, which can be used as a relationship between sustainable development and corporate social responsibility. The first and the most important is environment. Environment, uh, when companies are using, this, uh, are using environment, we can explain this term as we can use eco-friendly technology. Say for example, Vodafone have been introduced biodegradable uh, since and they are using their unused flyers uh, as a biodegradable product. The second aspect is social equity. Social equity simply means when companies are, uh, are answering to the questions of simple social needs such as food, water and sanitation. And the third aspect is and the most important is economic growth. There is a positive relationship between uh, economic growth and corporate social responsibility and sustainability. Uh, we, I have used few examples when, corporate, when companies are using corporate social responsibility in a manner that are beneficial to the society. The first one is Mahindra and Mahindra are using uh, Mahindra and Mahindra are using, uh, are using CO2 emissions and uh, they are launching their project known as Haryali and they have introduced an eco-friendly alternative mode of transport such as Bijli and Bharat Petroleum with, uh, with its, uh, its eco-friendly initiative known as Boond is using rainwater harvesting. Now in one word I would like to say that uh, corporate social responsibility with, uh, when with clubbed with sustainable development uh, can be a uh, can be a win-win situation for both the parties in the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you, Rinika Sharma. You presented a very nice case how to integrate the corporate social responsibility and sustainable development. Because whatever development we are having today, can we pass on this development to the future generation? If we are going to destroy the planet, that means what is going to happen in future. That means development should be in such a way that it should keep on going for a long, long period. That means you build a very strong case how this is possible in this way. Thank you for this your presentation. Next one is Asta Siksena, Assistant Professor, Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, IIS University. Namaskar everyone. The topic of my study is integration of ICT and e-governments in Rajasthan. Uh, first of all, I would like to tell something about what is e-governments. E-governments is a transformation 
of government to provide efficient, convenient and transparent services to the citizen through ICT, that is information and communication technology. Uh, the key agenda of the Rajasthan government is to bring about uh, qualitative improvements in the government to provide better services to the common man or we can say to the citizen. Information communication technology has been identified as an important strategic tool to bring about improvements in the productivity and performance of the government and to inculcate deeper citizen involvement within the government process. Uh, government of Rajasthan is not only, uh, uh, you know, doing something for the government, they are also uh, working towards improving the quality of life of the citizens and uh, bridging the social economic divide in the state. Uh, I have pointed out various uh, government initiatives which has been taken. First of all, I would like to discuss uh, which is within the government, government to government, that is Chief Minister's Information System the right to information portal which is online now. We have digitalization and e-catering e that is uh, you know recording something through electronic device on internet. Then we have the video conferencing and the mobile conferencing. Uh, we have SIMPF that is uh, state insurance and provident fund. We have lights that is uh, litigation information tracking and evaluative system which is to create a comprehensive database and to provide information to the state government to uh, uh, different matters. Then we have uh, Vikas Darpan, which is the global information system. <laughs> and these are the various uh, initiatives which is uh, being taken uh, for the betterment of the citizens. We have eMitra. Uh, we have Arogya, which is online, uh, which is basically a campaign to collect health data in the rural area of Rajasthan. We have the Mandi online and the RSRCC. Uh, to conclude, I would like to say that e-governments is basically what? It is easy governments, effective governments and economic governments. Uh, uh, the government of Rajasthan is creating a path to develop e-governments in various departments by launching various several key projects which I have discussed. And uh, there are various programs which is started by the government to have a developed and prosperous state. The Cisco India Summit uh, is also an initiative by the Chief Minister of Rajasthan uh, to make Rajasthan an innovation and knowledge hub. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Akshay Sena, for uh, giving uh, this one. E-governance uh, and uh, ICT. What the Rajasthan government is going to take these steps. In some of the issues, in e-governance, government may be interested, but they will not take any interest. The reason being, the Jamabandi and uh, Gadwari, etc., of the land, land revenue records, they don't want to disclose to anyone. Because so many Benami transactions, they have taken place, or the politicians or bureaucrats, they have owned this land, they will never expect that this data should be given on the public records. That means, your idea is good, but who is going to take the initiative? That is one big question. Uh, Himnit Rai and Parul uh, Bhargava. This is from Assistant Professor, Department of Tourism and Airlines Management, IS University, Jaipur. A warm welcome to one and all present here. Today I am going to present uh, the role of the cooperation. Basically, in earlier speech of sir, he has, as he mentioned, that in US and other countries, the basically corporate governance is taking place in recent years. So I'll be taking that B corporations basically benefit corporations. It is a midway between two. One is for profit, and other is non profit organization. Now, what is the benefit corporation? Benefit corporation is basically an incorporated entity that can earn and distribute profits like for-profit organizations and non-profit organizations. Benefit or, uh, corporations are based on the idea that corporations can be governed not only for their shareholders' best interest, but for the best interest of their all the stakeholders, that is uh, employees, customers, communities, and uh, society too. Uh, B, B corporations or benefit corporations are recently incorporated in USA. In 30 states, they have incorporated in the USA. Recently, Italy too, they have uh, legalized this B corporation, and now Australia is on the verge to adopt this B corporation. Now, what are the provisions of B corporations? The main purpose is that, that it should create some general public benefit. Then, the public benefit should be there. 
so that they can enjoy a, a branding, they can enjoy the healthy environment, they can work in very uh, better, so, uh, so that the society can develop on and all. They can uh, definitely, they can shall have right to name specific public uh, benefit purposes. For example, they can give 50% of their uh, profit as a charity. The creation of the public benefit is in the interest of the benefit corporation. Now, second provision is uh, accountability director's duties are to make decisions in the best interest of the corporation. So, now uh, one of the interest of the director is to they, they have to work for the welfare of the entire stakeholders, not only the simply uh, shareholders, but entire stakeholders. Now, right of action, uh, only shareholders and directors have the right of action. No, basically, in B corporations, anybody cannot uh, sue the uh, directors. Only shareholders and the initially stakeholders can sue according to this act. Right of action can be for violation of failure to pursue general or specific public benefit. Change of control, right? Well, benefit corporations are treated like all other corporations for tax purposes. It is different than regular uh, corporation, just in the manner of the statute that it is for which it has been uh, uh, made. Uh, has been made. But if we talk about tax purpose, then it is no. There is no difference between the regular corporations and the benefit corporations. Now, what are the importance of? Uh, it gives empowers. It empowers investors. It improves innovations. It increases long run profitability as directors are they are working for the society. So in long run, definitely they will be in touch with the society, and society will give some uh, benefit to the in the long run. Increase tax revenue, happier work environment. Now employees will be more, they will be working in more happier environment. Consumer facing branding. Now B corporations, benefit corporations can give them that they are working for the society. So they will enjoy some branding value. The objective of study is to uh, examine the role of B corporations, to do compare, to, to comparative study of B corporations and regular corporations. To analyze the impact of B Corporation on the stakeholders, to study the important role of B Corporations in changing business scenarios, so business changing business scenarios quite volatile. Basically, I have started, uh, we have collected the second data collection methods. Now, what are the conclusions and findings? Benefit corporations are similar to the uh, normal organizations except for the corporate purpose standard to which benefit corporations are paid. B corporations generate some sort of public benefit and have a positive impact on society or the environment. B corporations direct directors and officers are accountable to that public benefit or general public benefit. B corporate B corporations provides an accessible way of uh, formalizing social and environmental objectives for a company of any type. Any company, any regular company, any fire fire company, any uh, government company can adopt this. Organization. They can even convert. Nowadays, they can even convert to B corporations. Any uh, normal working company can convert to the B corporation. The B corporation provide an objective measure for companies' social and environmental performance and can help identify gap between gap and inform the sustainable strategy. It is relatively a new and uh, growing faster term. Most consumers and employees have yet to learn about it. The legislative uh, environment for benefit corporation is still emerging. Yet there is uh, many things that are to be done in this regard. The concept of uh, benefit corporation provide a practical way for companies to become part of solution and join a business driven momentum to change society. So we corporation basically come, uh, driven the so business to bring us uh, overall change in the society. <coughs> Hi. <laughs> now there are only two speakers now. Uh, next one is Neha Sri and the... Uh, the topic of my research paper is corporate governance mechanism and market reaction. Basically, I am focusing on the Indian banking sector. Corporate governance is basically a set of rules and regulations which the company require to run ethically and to uh, safeguard the interest of the stakeholders. As we have seen that there are safety corporate scandals in the early 2000s. So the role and the responsibility of the directors increase towards saving at the interest of the stakeholders. The objective of the study is basically doing a comparative performance analysis of the nationalized and the private bank. Two, two banks from each sector have taken. Uh, from the private I have taken HDFC and ICICI. From the nationalized I have taken BOB and SBI.
the scope of the study is basically to uh, find out the NPAs, the value of the NPAs before the provisions and after the provisions, as well as the gross and the net NPAs. Uh, several uh, re, uh, accounting tools has been used. Basically, the basic accounting tool which I have used is the ratio analysis. And after uh, the three main things, the three main ratios which I have used is the uh, capital adequacy ratio, return on asset ratio, and the NPAs. The correlation among the three has been calculated. Apart from this, the share prices and the earning per share individually I have taken. The general conclusion is basically that the RBI has issued the broad implication, broad guidelines for the implication of the Basel Accord. We know, we know, we all are very much aware that the Basel Committee was formed in 1974 by the group of central bank governors of the 10 countries. Uh, but initial, the, initially it was named as Basel 1 and Basel 2. After that it was expanded and 30 more countries entered into that and India was included under it. But in spite of Basel 1 and Basel 2 uh, guidelines, the uh, financial crisis was there. Uh, we remember the financial crisis of 2008, the Lehman Brothers we remember, there was an imbalance in the balance sheet and it was said that the left hand side of the balance sheet was not right and the right hand was not left. So after that the Basel Committee 3 was there and the basic purpose of that was to make a balance between both the sides of the balance sheet. The basic purpose was this. It was basically uh, came into existence or you can say the RBI has forwarded the Basel 3 rules from uh, second, on 2nd second May 2012 and it was fully effective from 1st first, uh, first January 2013 and they are expecting that the fully implemented capital ratio will be achieved till 2018. The research is going to basically uh, contribute in creating the transparency in the decision making, accountability and the responsibility, disclosures of the important decisions and the share price movement. The study is basically concentrating on the public and the private sector banks, the Basel, the Basel rules which is basically launched. They are saying that there should be a, a buffer capital base, there should be an educate capital base, there should be liquidity of assets as well as a, uh, you can say a common equity, a balanced common equity so that both the sides of the balance sheet are balanced. Thank you. Comments is also corporate governance. That means having a good corporate governance, it will always lead to good performance in that. Try to read on this way. The next one is Abhishika Sharma, a search scholar, IS University Everybody has rightly said it's already about to be four, and we all are. Uh, almost disinterested in this uh, conference but still you have to be with me for at least 10 minutes uh, I hope I don't make you so bored and dumb before that I'll uh, going into the topic I'll just show you a very small video hope you like it please play Rajasthan the largest state in India is home for close to 7 people. They live in booming cities, big and small villages, and remote hamlets. The state is amidst a historic transition, overcoming the challenges of harsh climate, inhospitable land, and scanty and erratic rainfall. Rajasthan is now ready to take its place among the front-runner states in India. The state's leadership is committed to making Rajasthan a developed and prosperous state. Towards this, Rajasthan is focused on upliftment of the weaker sections and intrusive development. Closely aligned with the state's vision and designed to facilitate its fruition is Rajasthan's IT vision. The state's robust information technology framework is comprehensive and multidimensional. And at the heart of this infrastructure and effort is the mission to improve the life of citizens living in the most remote habitations. With its multimodal network, Rajnet, the state has taken seamless connectivity across the length and breadth, connecting over 15,000 gram panchayats. For quick and convenient delivery of services to citizens, Government of Rajasthan set up the e-Mitra platform in 2004. Today, 
It is operating in all 33 districts of the state and services are being provided through over 10,000 e-mitra centers and kiosks. These kiosks are run on PPP model and generate employment and entrepreneurial opportunities for local residents. <coughs> the services can also be accessed by citizens on their desktops and mobile phones using the e-mitra mobile application. Currently, over 150 services are being provided through eMitra, and these include services to a large number of central and state government departments, public sector units, institutions, and even private businesses. Rajasthan also has an unprecedented and unique scheme for women empowerment, financial inclusion, and direct benefit transfer, the Bhamasha Yojana. It is an end-to-end -end service delivery platform for transfer of cash and non-cash benefits to the targeted beneficiaries in a transparent manner. Bhamasha interface enables banking facility at e-Mitra kiosks, ATMs and banking outlets and also payment through mobile. In order to ensure smooth payment process, payment gateways of various banks have been integrated and types have been made with aggregators. A leading tourist destination, Rajasthan is home to innumerable tourist attractions that include seven UNESCO World Heritage Monuments. <coughs> Rajdhara, an integrated GIS and decision support system of the state, has taken up 3D mapping of a number of these monuments for tourists as well as conservationists. Already home to renowned manufacturing and service corporations, Rajasthan has further stepped up investment promotion into the state. Rajdhara has also taken up strategic assemblage of large land banks for planned industrial development. At the heart of this IT infrastructure is a state-of-the-art nerve center. Rajasthan also has a vibrant IT ecosystem as it is home to leading companies engaged in IT and ITES operations. Besides advantages of low-cost location, what is attracting these companies is availability of a large pool of trained manpower. The state has taken up IT training of youth on a large scale under the state livelihoods mission. As Rajasthan readies to leapfrog into the future, information technology in the state is ready as a vital springboard. Uh, okay, uh, hope you uh, got to know what exactly is e-governance and what the state government is doing in this regard. Um, the topic of my presentation is awareness and participation of citizen in e-governance, a study of uh, Jaipur city. So I showed you this video just to give you a brief idea what the government is doing in order to pr uh, promote e-governance. Uh, I won't go into the details, what is e-governance, what are the various programs. Just to give you a brief note again, I'll show you a diagram which shows what are the uh, paradigms of e-governance. In this diagram, you can very well see that the government is working or putting its effort to promote e-governance through government to government, central government and state government. Again, one is uh, government to business houses and NGOs. Another one is government to local bodies or local people. And last one is uh, government to local government. So uh, again, no detailing of all those things, just uh, a study was done in order to see what is the participation and awareness level the, that the people have developed by knowing about e-governance. So the basic research questions that I framed was whether the citizens are aware about the e-governance programs run by the state and if yes, how much do they participate. 
and uh, the objective was just to study the awareness level and participation of the citizens and uh, the respondents were no doubt of Jaipur about 100 respondents were questioned data was mostly collected through questionnaire interview and of course secondary data was used through books research studies and journals uh, and uh, again uh, when this uh, study was done, uh, the first finding was about the awareness. Uh, when the awareness level of the people was checked and data was uh, questionnaires were put to them, it was found that only 60% of the people were about the various e-governance programs run by the state. The reason being, um, uh, the me uh, medium e-governance is basically through computers and internet and internet and computers are mostly used by youths, people like you I can include myself also, like you and me, right? Uh, whereas people, uh, especially who belong to the late 60s or the elderly members of the family, they don't, mostly don't use computers or internet and are unaware about these programs. 25% uh, of the respondents were uh, knowing about what exactly is e-mitra, what are the functions of e-mitra, and some of them knew about Rajasthan State Road Transport Corporation as they used to make reservations through this site. And only 15% were unaware about what are the what is exactly is e-governance and what are the programs run by them. Then uh, the question was about participation. As far as participation was concerned, 95% of uh, the respondents were exactly using what uh, various facilities of Imitra, especially depositing of pills. Um, then uh, taking pensions, transfer of funds, everything was used by them. Um, uh, RS, uh, RTC site was used by people in order to uh, uh, have reservation for buses and students were using this site for looking at the career opportunities. Monday online was used by people uh, who are basically from the business background. Only 5% of them were using this. 90% uh, of the respondents never visited the Arogya online site, which basically concer uh, is concerned about the health of the health of the people. Uh, instead of visiting there, they are visiting the local health dispensaries run by the state government. Another findings was the rest of the sites which were in my studies were either neglected or were not used by the respondents. Uh, last but not the least, the government of Rajasthan should focus on uh, creating more awareness campaigns about the e-governance programs through television, radio, newspapers and it should be implemented in a better way. Thank you. Various schemes introduced by the government regarding the e-governance. And again it is a computer based technology which is applied in that case. If I simply ask what is the literacy rate in Rajasthan? Nearly, yes. nearly how much? So it's around uh, 46%. 46%. 54% are illiterate. Yes. And definition of literate is what? You can simply read yes. or write. May not be a class one mask. Yes. What is the question, sir? How many people? <coughs> the second question is about the how many people they have electricity. <laughs> how many households they are having electricity? Yes, sir. What percent is near in Rajasthan? Illiterate or literacy? No, no, electricity. 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 Yeah. In Rajasthan, 67%. See, 60% is the literacy rate, 67% they are having electricity. And nearly water, I think it should be less than 60%. 43%. 43%. Now, in these circumstances, you have done this study only in Jaipur, where electricity, everything is available. But if you talk about the whole of the Rajasthan, you have 60, 60 percent is the literacy rate, and 67 percent of the people they are having electricity, and uh, 43 percent are having the water. What do you can expect? What are the basic necessities? Please, you provide first time. The basic necessity. These things can, they, they can come afterwards. That means you are taking care only in the uh, this uh, metro areas, not in the uh, other areas. And that's why you, see, you are finding that uh, the website which is clicked by the masses, its percentage is very low. This can be the problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. But it is a nice good time. Thank you. Thank you so much.
anyone who uh, has got the paper in this session? Anyone else? Who has not marked the attendance but he has to present the paper in this session? Please come. Is it there?